For our last day in Singapore, Peterson and I stayed at the Conrad Singapore Orchard, in the heart of Singapore's orchard shopping area. As we had an afternoon flight, we had some time to relax and have one last buffet breakfast before heading to the airport. The breakfast at the Conrad was quite good and had a pretty unique selection. From the juice selection, the blue pea coconut water caught my eye, so I had to give it a try. It's just like coconut water. After enjoying our meal, we booked a grab taxi and departed for Changi Airport. Today we'll be flying out of Changi's Terminal 3. There was no line at the check-in counters for any class of travel, so within a few minutes, we checked in our bags, got our boarding passes, and proceeded through immigration. Hmm? Oh, I don't think it's mine, but I'll take it. <laughs> EVA Air Premium Economy doesn't come with lounge access, but since there's so much to see and do in Changi Airport, we didn't mind at all. We walked around taking in the airport ambiance, snapped a few photos, and visited souvenir stores. I want that car. Eventually, we walked all the way to Terminal 1, where we sat down and had lunch at one of my favorites, Yakun Kaya Toast. One last Kaya Toast. Until next time. When's the next time we're coming back? This must be so fattening. There's so much butter in here. Mm. Satisfied. With our Kaya Toast craving satisfied, we hopped on the SkyTrain to slowly make our way back to Terminal 3, where our flight would be departing from. As we still had some time to spare, we opted for a slight detour so that we could ride the SkyTrain between Terminal 2 and 3, which is the only segment of track that goes through the famous jewel. Once back in Terminal 3, we headed to Gate B7 for the security check and boarding. Pro tip, make sure to use the restrooms before heading into the gate waiting area. You'll have to go through security at the gate, and most of the gates don't have restrooms inside. Here is the aircraft for our flight, a Boeing 777-300ER, registration Bravo 16732. After a slight delay, boarding began. Aside from elites and Royal Laurel passengers, EVA uses a back-to-front boarding process, which means some rows of economy class will board ahead of premium economy. EVA's premium economy cabin consists of 56 seats in a 242 configuration, spanning 7 rows. My seat was 22A, a window seat in the third row on the left side. At 
the seat, you'll sit right by the leading edge of the wing with a great view of the massive GE90 engine. In front of you, you'll find an 11-inch touchscreen TV sporting EVA Star Gallery in-flight entertainment system. The screen can tilt upwards in case the person in front reclines their seat. To the side, you'll find a coat hook. In the seat storage pocket, you'll find a pair of headphones which we'll unpackage and try out later. The 777 safety card, sickness bag, and duty-free shopping magazine are also found here. The seat offers 38 inches of legroom. At my height of 5'7", it was plenty enough for me. A footrest is also provided, which was a nice touch. Peterson, being closer to 5'11", seems to be having no issues with the legroom either. If you have small bags or purses, there's plenty of room below to put a bag or two. In my case, all my random camera equipment. At the front of the armrest is a small side table for drinks. The armrest flap opens up to reveal the tray table, which is pretty sturdy and can slide forward and backwards. At the front of the middle console, you'll find the headphone jack, USB power port, and the universal power outlet. On the seat is a small pillow which provides some lumbar support. On the other armrest, you'll find the IFE controller and the seat recline button. The headrest can be adjusted up or down and can be folded in as well for neck support. As we settled in, the crew came by to confirm our meal orders which we had pre-ordered prior to the flight. Even though the boarding was delayed, we still pushed back and departed on time. Many seats were empty for this segment, which made the cabin feel extra spacious.
About 30 minutes after departure, the crew came around with a drink service, from which I got an apple juice. A pack of mixed nuts and rice crackers was provided, as well as a packaged cold towel. Really thick towel. Whoa. Cold towel. While we wait for the meal service, let's take some time to explore the Star Gallery in-flight entertainment system. The home screen was intuitively laid out and reminded me a bit of the Windows 10 tiles menu. Navigating around the menus was snappy and easy. You can find a variety of movies by region, genre, and most interestingly, they had a Tom Cruise series. EVA must really love Tom Cruise. The flight map was fully featured and had a lot of different views. I particularly liked the command center and the time zone views. While we're here, we can also take a look at the food and beverage menus for the flight. Now that we've reached cruising altitude, we're free to recline our seats. Peterson will demonstrate the amount of recline these premium economy seats have. From his reaction, it definitely seems quite generous. The Wi-Fi has also been switched on, so let's check that out. A few different options are offered, including 30 minutes of complimentary browsing, $5 for 30 megabytes, $15 for 100, $30 for 300, or $40 for what I'm assuming is unlimited. The prices were pretty steep, and for a short flight, I opted to stick to the 30 minutes of free Wi-Fi. With all that out of the way, our meals have arrived. The appetizer was a smoked duck breast with mango salsa and papaya salad. It actually tasted pretty good. For my main, I had the stir-fried prawn noodles. The chili sauce looked and smelled really good, and I made sure to mix it thoroughly into the noodles. This dish was delicious. Peterson got the other option of braised beef brisket with rosemary and garlic mashed potatoes. Let's try it out. Mm. That's good. Chili oil for the win. You want to try some? It's not. I want to, but can't. One bite. Huh? One bite. On the side, you also get a bread roll with butter. And for desserts, a tray of fruits and a citrus cream cheesecake. For drinks, I opted for a cranberry juice and near the end of the meal, a coffee with a healthy portion of milk. It's a lot of milk. It is a lot of milk. After a delicious meal, we still had about two hours to go in the flight, so I decided to put on a movie and try out the iFi system. The EVA headphones weren't noise cancelling, but were decently comfortable at least for the short duration that I wore it. The cabin lights were dimmed into a beautiful sunset color palette to match the sunset hues outside.
During our approach, we passed through some thick cloud layers into a rainy Taipei, so there wasn't much to see until we were very close to touchdown. I was very impressed with my first experience on EVA Air's premium economy. The seats are really comfortable with generous legroom and recline. The food was excellent and had me wanting seconds of that chili prawn noodle. The iFee was great to use with plenty of entertainment options and the crew were kind, charming and efficient. Excellent flight all around. And that wraps up my EVA premium economy trip report. Thank you so much for watching and special thanks to my Patreon members. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you're looking for more EVA Air trip reports, why not check out my EVA business class review from Taipei to Vancouver. Also, check us out on Instagram or Facebook at One More Week to Go or visit our website at onemoreweektogo.com. And with that, thanks for watching, happy travels, and I'll see you in the next one.